joined by Eric Tucker with Rotax Aircraft Engines, and we are truly standing in the presence of greatness. The granddaddy of the line, what truly started the four-stroke revolution in the Rotax, the Rotax family, the 912. Eric, why don't you tell us a little bit about the development of this aircraft engine? I'd love to. This particular engine has got a long history. It actually went into production at the end of 1988, so it's been around with us for a while. Surprisingly enough, this generation engine wasn't our first attempt at four strokes for aircraft. But we had a very this minor, minor success with a 508 upright twin, but it was a little low horsepower. There was a twin cylinder version of this called a 906 that never really bore any fruit. But when we did produce this engine called the 912 engine, it definitely became a, a, a landmark engine for us because it had the power to weight ratio that people were looking for was smooth and it performed and that was the key elements. Uh, it went through a lot of changes in the early years, so much so that uh, we have over 3,000 documented changes on the engine's development, but it's always been a metamorphosis. We've never been one to change things dramatically and very quickly. Cirrus Design's Vision SJ50 single engine personal jet offers exceptional fuel efficiency, flexible seating for up to seven, advanced avionics, and all the Cirrus safety features you expect, including the Cirrus airframe parachute system. With its detailed design, the Cirrus Vision is technologically advanced, yet engineered to be simple to fly, to allow owner pilots more lifestyle pursuits than any other personal aircraft. Learn more about the Vision SJ50 at cirrusdesign.com. Obviously, it's a geared engine. Well, that's, that's a big change because if you want to make it light, if you want to make it perform, we have to cut down the crankshaft mass, and that means we're going to have to multiply the torque, spin the crankshaft faster. That gives us the power. This will develop 80 horsepower at 55 to 5,800 RPM takeoff. This allows me also to run a 70-inch, 70 72-inch prop because I'm running it at 2,600 RPM. Now, we do have an eccentric that drives a mechanical fuel pump off the gearbox. We have a lot of things we can drive a vacuum. We have a vacuum pad. You can drive a vacuum pump or other accessories off the back of the gearbox if you want. Now, it is a central camshaft, so we do have at the bottom and the very underneath the gearbox an oil pump system. And we have a spin-on oil filter, very easy to service at the front of the engine. That's important for people. And this is the latest version of the configuration, too. You will notice there's a big sticker on top of the engine. This is the ASTM compliant. All of our four-stroke series are ASTM compliant engines. The fuel line system we're using here and the fuel pump, this is directly from our type certificated version engines, the 912A and the 912F series. And this meets the TSO standards for uh, fire, fire uh, resistance, five minutes for 2,000 degrees. And it has all the banding, everything that's the same thing we'd have on type certificated. On the end of the line, all the manufacturer has to do is connect this to a bulkhead fitting, to an AN, and he's way he goes for his fuel system. In addition, on the fuel system, we have on top of the engine a small fitting. This is for a fuel return line to minimize the possibility of vapor lock issues, and that's in integrated, integral with the new lines. Uh, the engine, to keep it small and light in its development, we went with a opposed four-stroke, and we went with liquid-cooled heads. That allows us to make it very short and keep the cooling in control. It is ram air cooled for the cylinders, but it's only a 61 millimeter stroke, so we don't have to have a lot of cylinder finning here. It is dry sump oiling, which means a small oil capacity that's rotated rapidly through the block, keeps it very cool, and makes the engine light again, keeps it very small. Another big feature, of course, it, this is a dual capacitor ignition system. We have two uh, ignition modules, four triggering coils on the back, four coils underneath, two plugs per cylinder, so it's a completely dual system. And with no mags, there's nothing to wear out. All we have to do is spark plug changes, some um, checks every few hundred hours on the resistance values, and away you go. It's no real big maintenance issue to deal with here, as you would with, say, mags. The other uh, features of this engine are really quite simple. This particular model is a 61-millimeter uh, stroke, I think we mentioned, 79.5-millimeter bore, that's 1,211 cc's. Same displacement as our 914 turbo. It does uh, have a 9 to 1 compression ratio. Nice feature of that is I can burn even regular 87 octane unleaded auto, or I could burn premium, or I could burn 100 LL. Uh, the engine will run on all of those fuels quite successfully. It has got very low CO emissions. They have really optimized the carburetor calibration. So we don't have a lot of fuel burn in this engine. It's, in fact, it's by far the most kind engine fuel burn for an 80 horsepower, any in the in its size range.
Okay, we are cleared for our approach. Have our Garmin GPS set up to fly the LPV. And look, here comes the glide path. Now you're probably wondering how we can intercept a glide path when there's no ILS on the field. Well, hey, that's the beauty of WASP GPS. No ILS, no localizer, no problem. WASP gives us full vertical guidance even without ground-based navigation. Okay, next you're probably wondering why there's spit all over your side of the windshield. It is a very easy aircraft engine to manage. Throttle control is very responsive. The power is there when you need it, and it's beautiful when you can throttle it back, burn about three and a half gallons per hour, and go about on your cross-country flight. Rotax has obviously done a lot of homework to make such a complicated piece of machinery so easy to operate. Automatic mixture control is something that this carburetor does very well. Within the normal flying ranges we see, you're not going to have to adjust or tweak anything. The standard jetting is going to get you around any normal flying attitudes with any VFR aircraft. And uh, we're now, I wouldn't say you don't have to have carburetor heat. That depends on conditions and the installation, obviously. It's nice to have it if you need it. That's correct. And uh, we're certainly happy with that. One thing I would like to mention while we're talking about the engine here is the fact that uh, maintenance wise, we do supply with the engines a CD that comes with all our operator's manual, maintenance manuals, installation manual, parts manuals, all supplied. If an owner loses it or misplaces it or it's a second owner, all of that is available online as well through web services such as Rotax Owner and for the, you can locate it through the Rotax official site, RotaxAircraftEngines.com and that's certainly available and we always felt it was a necessary to give it to people, let's not charge it to them. So uh, that's, a, that's been a big plus. In addition, we have set up an international uh, Rotax standards training program. So if anybody takes a standards training program, uh, it's going to meet at Rotax international standards. And we have those people located throughout the United States, Canada, and Europe. And uh, Rotax Flying and Safety Club, who I'm also part of, teaches all those programs. We have other companies in the U.S. that do the same thing. One of the uh, old stalwart sayings of the uh, other engine manufacturers is, take your aircraft to any FBO in the country, they'll be able to work on it. It sounds like Rotax is holding its own in that segment, and as more and more operators and uh, uh, technicians become familiar with the Rotax power plant, they're going to have an awful lot of information to make their job that much easier. Well, I, I think so. We have four major service centers in the United States about 50 repair stations located in the United States and there are numerous technicians that have been trained. Beginning this year in 2008 we're going to be uh, putting these listed up on the web pages so people will be able to locate them more easily and we'll also put down what is their training level too. So if you're flying with a CT you want to know you're going to a four-stroke trainer and you know that he can, he's able to service your engine. So that's what we're using the Rotax Flying and Safety Club for and uh, this is also going to be listed through sites such as the Rotax owner site and we want to make this simple for people and operators. It's been a complaint in the past, so we're going to address it. Sounds like a plan. Eric, thank you very much for your time and for a little bit of a history lesson for me. I very much appreciate it, and so do our viewers. Thank you.